Hello everybody, thank you so much for joining. Right now it's 2.30, which is time for us to have our WMYSK series, online series. And uh, before I officially invite our guest here today, so let me just introduce myself one more time. My name is Vesti and we have Lawrence right here. And uh, for those of you here uh, who have just joined us watching this Facebook Live, I would appreciate and would welcome for those of you here to also like and share this video so you can benefit many more people out there. And especially for today, we have a very special guest here who's going to talk about personal branding and image management, right? So but before I talk on that, uh, let me just um, announce a few things first and again, help us also like and share this video and do also keep your share in uh, public privacy status so that we can select a few lucky winners here to walk away with limited edition touch and go card. Tom Mahadeo, limited touch and go card right there, Lawrence, right? And also, um, yes, so we are going to pick some lucky winners. So I appreciate you to like and share as well. And uh, so, so let's get started into this. So before that, uh, everybody just drop your hi and say hi to Wendy right here. Uh, very honored and thank you so much for joining this show right here. And uh, so perhaps Wendy, uh, okay, so before I ask you to introduce yourself, I think let's have a very casual conversation. Because yesterday, uh, where it's announced that we have extension of MCO, so what do you feel? Yes, <laughs> and it's actually expected. It's under expectation, and uh, we have been like this for a month already. So very much we have accept accepted it already. So the extension we have to really in a positive way to let us continue finishing what is actually not competing yet. So right. that once we have the MCO extended, we can full gear, continue doing what is needed. So to me, right. how I look at it, I do not want to lag behind, you know, wasting the month or a month and a half doing nothing. Yes, yeah. of course, I know my cooking skills sucks, so I never try to cook at all. <laughs> so constantly, I'm still building what is needed or supposed to do. Uh, right. I hope that um, once this is actually released, we can have everything as normal as before. Yeah. Right. So like like yourself, uh, Lawrence. How I mean, like what 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 do you feel once we have announced this? Extension? Well, well, I think as what uh, Wendy has mentioned, Doctor Wendy has mentioned that uh, it is expected, not like the second second time. Uh, the first time when it was extended, uh, it was a bit heartbreaking. But the second time, I think the people are now realize that we need to cut the chain. We need to stop this uh, once and for all. So I think it is expected, but it's just that uh, uh, we just have to find more things to do in the next fourteen days. <laughs> yes. All right, right. So right there, we have uh, we have somebody K K G T O say hi, Doctor Vendi Liu. All right, this here. Okay, so okay, so so I just want to get to know you further. So like, uh, Wendy, would you mind to just introduce yourself, well, background about yourself and what you do? Uh, all right. Thank you so much. Um, myself, actually, I was from finance background. You know, I graduated in finance. Okay. But of course, it is never, never something that I like. You see, people those days, yeah, especially our parents, we are very much into fulfilling our parents' dream rather than ours. So um, this is not something I like, but I have to. That's how I embarked into the finance. But of course, not long after, I, I left and I started into makeup and from right. makeup into skincare and cosmetic and finally I embark into image. Right. Uh, this is actually something or one of the best decisions that I ever made in my life. You know, it's because wow. I'm, I'm someone who cannot take routine at all. You know, I, I cannot tahan like going to the workplace, the same workplace again and again every day, you know, meeting the same group of people again and again every day and even doing back the same thing again and again every day. So, of course, luckily, I'm still having the same husband. For the <laughs> 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 yeah, you can't say that on air. Eh. I don't think he's actually listening to this live. Eh. That's, that's the reason why I find that what we are doing now in training, I find it's really, really happy and challenging, you know. So, yes. every year we have new input so that our training is so different from last year or even last few months. And yes. going to different locations for training, meeting different people is something that I, I really, really enjoy. And of course, for the past one month of not having training at all, yeah. I feel like the budget is calling me, you know, I want to dress up and how I can actually go out and do physical training again. Right. So, for years, I've been in this industry for a decade and a half. Mm. So, I'm 43 this year. So, no wow. need to count your fingers. I'm very oh. open to my age. Oh. Yes. And for years, I've actually trained uh, more than hundreds of companies that includes MNCs, GLCs, and the Fortune 500 companies. Right. And more than 60,000 corporate people ranging from the lower all the way to the highest level. 
Right. Uh, so this is actually in a nutshell of what I'm doing. All right. So I'm I, I'm very interested when you say you know you had this routine life and therefore you do what you're doing today. Okay. Let's let's go back to that time. I mean, where was the time that you like? Oh. Okay lah. I want to go in. What inspired you to go into this? I know you like makeup and all, but what was that moment, that, that deciding moment? Yeah. All right. I am actually being, being stale. Or I think people who know me well, I'm a, a man who are trapped in a woman's body. Actually, I oh. behave exactly like a man. Yes. Okay. And to me, I'm very impulsive. I can be like, okay, let's go for a course. I will search the course in the inter internet. So without much planning, I can just pay then inform my husband and there i go so okay. this is how i work you know because even let's say for example i want to buy a dress if i see the dress if if i don't buy on the spot i will be like wow the, this is, the feeling is like oh i think i need need something so right. how i look at it uh, in life there is actually something that let's not regret on things that we have not done Right. If you say time passed, but at least I pass it meaningly. It is something that I really, really want to do. And right. then even if you say don't waste money, money can earn back. Right? Mm. You, you get what I mean? Yeah. You save money for a certain reason, right? right? So speaking about all this, what makes me suddenly feel like I want to change my profession is when I started to go to my office every day looking around and I asked myself, wow, like that, lah. how many more years? You know, Because back then, my... Assistant manager is already what fifty. I say, wow, work until fifty years old. Only assistant manager. Then how many more years I need to hunt, you know, to have a life like that? Right. And then very fast, you know, within a week, I told my, I told my, uh, very good colleague, or oh, I say I have resigned. Then she said, Chisina, you kisiao is it? So kisiao is like you're crazy, is it? I say, yeah. Then I say, how can you get a job, you know, that fast and stuff like that? I say it doesn't matter. Shell sure can get one, and of course, surprisingly, within that month, I got another new job. Even mm -hmm. though the job is nothing related to what I have actually uh, go for, it's nothing related to finance. I was actually back in slimming century as a mm. sales personnel or whatnot because I just want to get a replacement of you know some income and stuff like that. Yes. Then that's how yeah. Every time if you say you know what's your planning and stuff like that, maybe one. This, this impulsiveness is one of my biggest strengths and at the same time is one of my biggest weaknesses as well. Because I will just accept without much thoughts about that. And yeah. then right after I, I take that up, then only I start to plan. And of course, we always must have a mentality that I always find it works for me. Once you decide it, never look back. Yeah. Wow. Very, very, very strong message now uh, initial part of our conversation <laughs> right. so, so okay, let's, let's 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 say hi to some of us here uh um dr mm -hmm. wendy jana saying hi edmund tan say hi hi, hi. edmund tan i know you've been hi, enjoying hi. for quite some time uh tasmini saying hi to you as well okay so in regards of okay personally something i'm personally very curious of is like okay so you uh i mean you, you specialize in uh, image and branding right Okay, I think I think on your take, mm -hmm. you you have been doing this for the past a decade and a half. What are some big mm -hmm. biggest common mistakes when it comes to the area of personal image and brand management? What are some of the biggest mistakes? Yeah, well, I like what I've actually just heard. You know, this is exactly like press the right button. Oh, okay. Now, in fact, when we talk about we let's not take talk about mistake like it is some of the things that people are not aware of. Yes. Now, in terms of uh, mistake, right? Why people make mistake? Some are, of course, intentionally, but most of the people are doing it unintentionally. Right. When we talk about unintentionally, it means that they are lacking of awareness. Right. Now, in fact, yeah, don't you agree with me? Yeah? There are the people in this world, the problems of most of the people are that they do not even know that they have problem. They are not aware yeah. that they have problem because True. everyone are the same. Uh, can. So when they are not aware, they will just find that, okay, let's do something that everybody is doing. Let's copy the, the people. This is very renowned. She is an influencer. He is what and what. So they are actually doing things that is not them, you know. Yep. That's the reason why the authenticity might not be there. And after a while, when they copy, they lost who they are. And right. this one cannot be sustained. Let's say, for example, some people are so not aware that when they look at a picture, for example, a, a portrait, Wow, so bagaya, you know, very stylish and this and that. So then they do exactly the same, but they do not actually know that the the portrait is not uh, in sync or suitable or even appropriate for their profession, for example, for what they are doing. 
uh, for their lifestyles and stuff like that. So that's the reason why in the end of the day, instead of having something to boost them up, so these are the things to that actually drag them down. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think I think what doctors say is very true. When they say it's true, I really like about that part on awareness. I think that's why my apprentice uh, started all these platforms to let people learn. Because um, to be very frank with you, uh, I've I've always regarded uh, Doctor Wendy as uh, somebody, my elder sister, that I learned a lot from her. Uh, actually, yes. we recently got connected, and uh, we also just you know realized that we came we came from a very long history of uh, uh, some of the other businesses that we previously were in. Yes. And uh, we had a very long yes, yes, yes. chat about it. And actually, in fact, this period of time, I also consulted her a lot on some of the knowledge that I didn't even know. You see, even what type of shirt to wear. You know, uh, I, re I just realized all my shirts, 80% of my shirts are actually for casual meeting. Uh, and I actually wear them to all my corporate and my presentation meeting. So I think awareness is is very important. So just to follow up on that question, uh, uh, Wendy, uh, many are unaware, definitely. They are unaware of this, uh, but yet some of them are also, re, uh, they, are, they, are, they are lazy. Either they are lazy or they are uh, not very keen to learn. What is your advice on this? Uh, again, another bingo question. <laughs> <laughs> no, why I say why I say so, yeah. You see, those days, yeah, I always thought of like, hmm, people who do not dress up are those who are not confident. But in fact, this is not right at all. People who don't care about their appearance, in fact, this group of people are very confident because mm. they they actually have a feeling like my hair already supersedes whatever is needed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. So. Um, throughout the journey yeah, in the, the past decade in the industry, we can actually see yeah, not many people are very much into this, this small piece of appearance because what they want is that, okay, how much I can deliver the best at my work, which is very important because we are here to work and to contribute. Yeah. But in right. terms of the awareness part, yeah, um, maybe last time we will find that it is not as important, but time has changed. You know, Everything is talking about branding. Now the packaging has to be uh, has to be as important as the content. We cannot compromise the content because if the content is not good, you will never last. The sustainability is not there. You know, there was one time someone asked me in LinkedIn. I've actually posted something, and then they actually wrote into me, "Is it someone's look? Okay, will influence the amount of likes and also the followers." Now this is just the entry level. People might like you one post, two posts. But how can you sustain and make people follow? It has from the substance already. So if we are able to marry the substance and the brand, that's how we can go further. So when we talk about whether it's lazy or not, normally we don't anchor it into uh, this is an additional effort. We want to actually let people know once you do this thing, you get what you want. So we never anchor, let's say I have stopped talking about looking beautiful or look good yeah, for easily two to three years in my training. Because first, mm. looking good or beautiful is very subjective. You yes. see there are, there are thousands of people trying too hard to do this and that to make yes. themselves look good. Yeah. But there are also thousands of millions of people just don't care about how they look. Yeah. So there is no, no um, measurement for looking beautiful first. Secondly, yeah, when you talk about beautiful, if you put beautiful as the main thing for brand management, not everybody needs that. So what we want is that how we can use image to work for us. Yeah. How, so that's why when we talk about this part, the awareness has to be how we link impression and perception together. Yeah. So this is actually a, a short or in a nutshell on how we overcome whether people want to put effort or not. But once they know the why, they will find the how. So we just need to educate people why they need this and they will actually go with the how and not tell people how without fulfilling the why. Why? Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's again very interesting and uh, actually I have actually learned about this. Uh, I think uh, Wendy can also agree with me that actually we have learned this way back uh, during our time in our previous uh, venture. Uh, we were also taught to uh, dressed to impress, uh, so that we we we, we yeah. also be deemed successful. 
but just a very short follow up on yeah. that. I really like that part about uh, uh, impression. You know that that leads to perception. I think uh, this is is closely related to you know personally on me, which I also I'm a person that I don't really care how I dress every day. I need to be very frank. People who knows me well, like Wesley, I think he has seen my same clothes over and over again, over and over again. I will pakai until I pecah lah, basically. So. Uh, doctor, there's a lot of times uh, the wrong impression gives the right perception or the right impression but give the wrong perception. So how do you see this uh, uh, specifically? How, do, how can we actually um, uh, let the youths or the young people to know which is actually uh, how do we identify which is the right impression to give people and the right perception? Okay, very good. Now, um, speaking about this, uh, let me actually give you uh, a simple question. Huh? Do you think that uh, it, is, it is fair for some people who look very clever, but in fact, once you start to talk to this person here, kosong mm -hmm. okay, there are tons and tons of people like that. Yeah, yeah. But also at the same time, there are a lot of people, once you look at them, they do not look like one, but once you know them better, then you will find that, wow, don't play player, this person mm. you got substance one. So yes. actually what we are talking about is in our language is actually something called the total image management. How mm -hmm. we can have the whole idea from your inner image. The inner image is your substance, who you yeah. really are. That is irreplaceable. Now we must first fit into our inner image. No point you go and like pretend, okay, I want to mimic this person and that person. That is actually never you. Okay, right. so right after this one, the first image we need to work with image because what we see gives the fastest perception, and what we see uh, is one of the, the senses that we learn the fastest way. Okay, so right after we build the visual, that's how we will have another continuation is called assume image. You see this, you will have something in mind already. That's how you have the perception. Let's say, for example, if you see someone, the body is full of tattoo. Okay, they might be a good person, but yeah. a lot mm. of time, yeah, we relate to, mm, they will have a second thoughts about a person, even though tattoo is an art. I have a very dear friend, yeah, who has, is a she, the body has a lot, I think, easily 50% of tattoo. But of course, oh. she is someone who was, yes, 50%, and she holds high position in, in the bank. So <laughs> how can we say that? Yes, yeah. but the assumed image will be our reputation, okay? And that's mm. how this visual assume and it leads to experience image. Experience mm. image is how we behave, how we communicate with people, our body language. Okay. So now if given a choice, yeah, if you can shorten the whole thing, yeah, once you look at this person, wow, he is so, you know, let's say intelligent. He looks intelligent, for example. So when the person come and talk to you and confirm this person is really intelligent and that's how your proven image is there and it happens just within mm. a blink you get it straight however if we do not actually build first on the visual image when people look at it hmm it's look like a nerdy until they give you a chance or you give yourself a chance person then only they find out that you are good you are intelligent, you are capable. Mm. So meaning to say, uh, we are actually having uh, uh, this alignment at a part. We have to actually tune it if we manage to do it successfully. Now, so why we say so is this. Yeah? Now, a lot of time people will say, build your image. But before we build, we have to first create it right. Now, in mm. the training sometimes, yeah, Wesley, we will ask people, hey, please yeah. introduce yourself. <laughs> a lot of time, yeah, Malaysians are way too humble. They will say, oh, I'm simple, I'm shy, I'm yeah. this and that. So once you tell me you are like that, it goes into my mind, you are shy. Yeah. So meaning to say, if I do not actually give myself a chance to explore further with you, so it's, it's just stop there, you know. To me, in my heart, in my memory, you are shy. Yeah. So let's start with something you create. Like, let's say, for example, the first time I, I actually met that too so once i talk to him boom, shock the first sentence of the first conversation is like boom they shot you uh caught you off guard you get what i mean so meaning to say yeah straight away he do not need to say much about how he looks anymore 
but you know this person has substance, something like that. But of course, not many people can be as sharp as that. You get what I mean? So especially we're back to the question on Datuk mentioned, how the youth nowadays can do that. Now, when we talk about youth, yeah, they are they are fresh. They much might not have much experience. The more they have to look into what is appropriate. Now, the word appropriate is needed is because the way they are brought up and us are so different. So we have you know different generation, but of course, once they're in the corporate world, they don't find it a problem at all. You know, yeah. So there was one time I trained a GLC. You'll be surprised. You know, it's a GLC. <laughs> And then she, when she came in, spaghetti stripe mm. with a short, short, short skirt. So I was like, am I actually seeing the right thing? You know, is she walking into the right class? So she do not even know at all until after we explain about what is supposed to be worn in the office. Then she came to me and said this, no wonder, la, Dr. Wendy, no wonder my colleague look at me one kind. So this is actually what we meant um, by understanding what is appropriate and why we use the word appropriate, not necessarily they have to waste a lot of money for branded, no. Okay, so appropriate means that what is actually suitable for your profession or maybe your mm. lifestyle right. or even the culture in our country. Yeah. Right. right. Okay, just, just, I think there's a very interesting perspective and you point out one, one good point where because personal image and brand management will help in terms of business, be it in terms of customer service, sales persuasion, or even internal communication. So, okay. So would you, would you mind enlighten like um, why, is, why people should actually know, I'm talking about in terms of the corporate and the business context. Many people are still unaware of why is it so important. So, so can you please enlighten us? Why is it so important? And what do you suggest to them? Ah, all right. Now let's talk about two different parts. Yeah? So right. in the corporate, <laughs> now the biggest challenge they face is that, that the corporate branding very power. But mm. the employee's personal branding lose power. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even in sync or aligned. Okay? First, aligning with their personal uh, branding with the corporate branding or yes. even the, the personal branding is not aligned with the destination or the position that the person is holding. Now, okay. after a certain level, let's say the higher you climb, yeah, your branding is no longer about you. It's no longer mm. personal. But your branding is, be, is now becoming a role model for people mm. to see. Yeah, Just like even we as a parent, I'm sure that you we want our children to be proud of us. Oh, yeah, my daddy like that. You know, my daddy is this and that. So nobody wants to actually let the people, oh, yeah, yeah, how you, how's your daddy? Oh, my daddy very lazy. You get what I mean? So meaning to say after we, we build our career, after a certain level, what we do is actually for the benefits of not only yourself, but your team member, the subordinate that you have, and as well as how you actually walk and uphold your destination representing the company. This is one. Now, many people actually tell me this, uh, or oh, I'm back end, I'm back end. No mm. need to do image, back end. I, I'm not customer facing. So normally, I will tell them, you know, the more you are back end, the more you have to put a little bit effort into this. You know why or not? If you are outside, yeah, customer only see you once in a while, okay? But if you are inside, your colleague have to suffer, see you every day, you know? If you have this kind of face, every day facing your clay, can you imagine how suffering it is yeah, to have you know, this kind of spirit every day? True. So when we talk about this, yeah, you see, what's inside fulfilling the, the uh, internal clients is more important than external clients. Yeah? Just like us at home. If you're not happy at home, how can yeah. you be happy at home? So the yeah. things has to be with an ecosystem. Because many companies will think that, oh, only the frontliners need it. Even some HR also say, oh, they are frontliners, but the HR also do not pay attention to this one. When we talk about how important it is, is when we are out there, the person, I mean, the public or even the customers will hardly remember the name of the employee, but they will actually mention the name of the company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just like when you sit in an aeroplane every morning, uh, let's say you have a, a what do you call an uh, early flight. So if the uh, what do you call air stewardess makeup is very strong, when you landed, you will tell your friends, hey, I tell you what this morning, wow, the 
you know, ABC Airlines, the stewardess will have the face, you know, the makeup like that. But do you remember the name of the person? The chances is very low. Second, you will mention the name of the company. Okay. Mm -hmm. And third, you will generalize. How many air stewardess you see in the morning? Two. But you will say that ABC Airlines, the air stewardess make up like that. So meaning to say that the rest of the air stewardess working for this company are actually getting involved. So people tend to stereotype and generalize. That's why the importance of why a corporate have to actually educate the people to have yeah, the, the, the employees' personal branding okay, aligning with the corporate branding. Yeah. Right. And I think it's a very, very different perspective. I mean, a very, a very wholesome when you say then the visual, then the corporate and employee branding, which is, which is something I think a lot of people need to know. And I think they can spend a lot of time to ponder this, especially during MCO. And uh, I would also like to take this opportunity where uh, Dr. Wendy, Siti Mariam Samin say, I agree with Dr. Wendy, image plays a role to impress people than easier to let people know us. I'll give you a thumbs up. Uh, another person called ED Sim says, agree. Okay, so I, I have a question. Um, a lot of people have this common misperception and you say this just now. And they say, hey, for me to improve my personal branding, right, must go and buy expensive stuff. <laughs> I know there's a very common misperception there. Okay, can you tell us more? Yeah. How did people actually come with this conclusion? Mm. Yeah, now, actually since uh, about in 2005, yeah, when I took up the course, a lot of people will say, hey, got this kind of job one, man. Even until today, when I tell people I'm an image consultant, uh -huh. they will say, hey, got business one, man. Got people <laughs> needs, man. So why people have this is because they thought, yeah, image is for those who are public figure, for example, for yes. celebrities and so on and so forth. But they have forgotten yeah, the more we are nothing, the more we need image and brand management. And it is not about the price tag on what we wear. It is actually as a whole on how you carry yourself from the A, B, C and D. A is appearance, how you appear. Okay. B is how you behave. C is how you communicate. And D is your reputation digital. So when you have a good image, you must actually have all this equally good. Then only people will say, oh, this person's image is good. Let's say, yeah, you see a lot of people, oh, this person, this girl is so nice. She dressed well. The whole body is branded. But once you speak, people know, you know, whether your image is good. And or once you behave the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you present, or even the way you do introduction to people, and it actually tells people that your image level. So when we talk about whether it is branded or not, I can tell you that, you know, I have a lot of baju is so cheap, so cheap, cheap until I can buy in so buy in Pasa whatsoever. It is not the price tag that matters, it's on how you carry yourself. Now, speaking about this, I have a little, actually, it's not a secret to me because those days we were very poor, you know, my, my, my family is very humble. I, I was always envious, you know, why my friend can wear Levi's jeans, you know? why this and that, why they have guest watch, why they have this. You know, back then, uh, guest watch is already very expensive to me, you know, even Adidas shirt also I don't have. So I always feel that mm, I want to save money, I want to buy this, I buy that. And then my elder sisters just tell me one thing. What you wear is not your brand. The real brand is you. If you are able to carry your brand well, no matter regardless what you wear, it's you that shine, not the baju, not the things that you wear. But of course, along the way, if you want to go for things which is actually good or you, know, you buy a luxury brand or whatnot, uh, it is just a lifestyle, but it doesn't mean it is a necessity. Yeah. So we hope that the, the younger generation, the youth nowadays, will not actually put having branded stuff as a good image. Sometimes also is the influence from the social media. The influencer are putting a wrong image in the social media that their, their lifestyle is like that, this and that. So they will feel like, wow, I think this is considered success. But success is so different from each and every one. So yeah, just do whatever within our capacity that will be good enough. Mm. Right. And, and you mentioned a lot of times during this interview, you spoke about finding themselves uh, or creating themselves. I mean, it's I, I think it's a very nice thing to hear this. I mean, just out of curiosity, 
in terms of steps, actions, mm. how can somebody actually discover or find themselves? Do you have any tips for that? Ah, okay, got tips. This one Go. is a little bit <laughs> on uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, now, you see, I'm, I'm not sure about you, but um, from my experience, Go. I think most of the people in the whole world will have a lot of doubts, you know, the question mark is everywhere. Right. For example, why I have been actually working so hard and yet nobody see my hard work. Yes. Okay, why I've been sacrificing so much and yet nobody appreciate what I've done. And even husband and wife, they say, why, you know, after so many years of marriage and it seems like my husband is not looking at me that way anymore. Or we even have the question like, why if this person do not like you, no matter what you do, they just don't like you. So we have endless of questions on all this. These are the doubts that we cannot get the answer. But in fact, yeah, they are answer. Okay. Well, this is called inattentional blindness. When we talk about inattentional blindness, for example, yeah, let's say, for example, this one is it's very real, you know. So whoever who listened to this after this, don't go and tell my husband. <laughs> you know, there was one time, huh? Uh, can a lot of people nowadays they do the eyelash extension? I think last year I tried, you know, I did the eyelash extension, and then after that, back home, I asked my husband, Hey, Lokonga, you've got different or not? Uh? Wow, he can't join it, he keep looking at me. Hmm. <laughs> then it took him a few seconds, and he said, ah, You change your eyeshadow color, leh. I say, Not the eyeshadow color. <laughs> He did a few rounds, you know, he tried, but cannot see the lashes are longer. Okay, so in this this time, a lot of people are already very angry, you know. They will say, why, what la, why you cannot see the lashes is longer. Most of the time, a lot of women will say, ah, my lokong never loved me anymore after so many years of marriage. Of course, I, I still scold him a little bit, huh? even though I know it's the intentional primary. <laughs> so, but I, uh, I also like... I have to scold him slightly later because after that, you know what he said? Because I have not wear glasses. Hmm. No. <laughs> Why they cannot see? Yeah, we will tend to blame people like, oh, okay, because, you know, the company is not appreciating me and this like that. But why people cannot see is actually very normal. Now, when we talk about this, yeah, even sometimes during our class, we have some simulation videos for them to see. When they watch the video, uh, there are a lot of things they missed. So same goes to employees. When we talk about employees, they will blame the company, blame their superior. Uh, yeah, I've been working so hard 10 years already, you are still not promoting me. We cannot blame the employees. It's because, you see, the company is so big. There are so many of you. How can the employer or even the, the superior to remember each and every one of them? So if they are not performing or not being selected, it's just that they're not prominent enough to be seen. This is a very mean statement. But if you want to not only survive, if we want to excel in what we are doing, we have to be prominent enough to be seen. So how can we make the person's focus into what we need to show people? Just like back to the, the husband and wife. Huh? So this is a very good metaphor for people to realize why we need to do changes. You see, when we first dating, the guy is so into the beauty of the, the girlfriend. Even though the girlfriend farted very smelly, so they cannot smell a thing. Eh? <laughs> so they say love is blind. Eh? It's not only actually affecting your eyesight. Even your smell sense also is affected. <laughs> but after many years of marriage, eh, even though the smell might not come from the wife. Hey, why you are like that one? Have you showered or not? Why <laughs> like that? It's because the focus is already different. Mm. So when we talk about this, yeah, the focus is the point. Try not to do everything and try to be everything. If you can do one thing very good, yeah, it's good enough for you to get what you want. Yeah, that's why there's a saying, say, jack of all trades, master of none. Yeah. When you try to do everything, we are a GP. But if you just do one thing and make it really, really good, you are a specialist. Yeah? So this is actually what we meant. Mm -hmm. I really, I really, I'm really impressed with the examples that you have given, Wendy. I, and I think, uh, I, I personally, I personally, uh, you know, I, I don't want to confess anything here, but that's definitely uh, anything husband and wife uh, go, go through. Uh, Wesley just 
got married. So um, uh, I think he'll yeah. share his fresh share of experience very soon. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe so now because, he uh, doesn't feel it. You know, I tell uh, your wife, you know, Wesley, to you know do your eyelashes, and then after that, uh, yes. <laughs> try to try to try to ask, do you see any difference? But yeah, when you, I really like that question about you know do one thing good and and uh, be uh, excel in that, and that's what uh, my practice has been focusing as well. But that on the other question uh, that I actually personally uh, sat down with you a few times, you actually shared a lot about you know even. Uh, different types of uh, baju, different types of pants. You even have so many, you know, so many content that you have shared with me, you know, that I even cannot uh, muscle at one time. <laughs> uh, I only have one very, very good question. I mean, how do we know that that particular image or that particular uh, thing is suitable for us? Because you see, like me, I didn't even know that actually that whenever even you know the patron, I met the patron a few times and you know the mm. color of his tie is different means the mood is different how do we actually know that uh, the, the 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 image that we carry is actually right for us mm, okay now it actually have to work backwards on our um, end objective mm. what we want to achieve in the end of the day now sure. as i mentioned just now image is actually at least let's put digital aside yeah it's at least three yeah three so appearance behavior and communication so that you A's, yeah, whatever meeting, probably not so much on A, but it's on B and C, okay? So yeah. now, not everyone will have strong B and C, for example. Now, when we talk about working backwards means, yeah, let's say, for example, okay, today I want to look professional, for example. Today, my intention or my end objective is, look, is to look approachable, for example. So from the approachable, then only we go and decide, okay, what are the things that I could wear in order for mm. me to achieve that, okay? But of course, there are some knowledge that we really need to know on the hierarchy. Now, when we involve corporate, yeah, there are some things that we have to understand and also aware, especially on the hierarchy of colors. Let's say, for example, shirt. You know, the darker the color, the lower the level of formality. Okay, yeah. so as uh, let's say, for example, the jacket, the higher, the darker the color, the higher mm. the level of formality. So these are some of the things that we need to know. Okay, and then when we talk about whether this is appropriate or not, it depends on whether how much we put focus on this one. So we will suggest, yeah, the awareness on what is right in dressing is important so that we can educate more and more people to have the A, B, and C complete, okay? To have the A, B, C complete. Now, what make, let's say, for example, since uh, Datuk has mentioned your own, uh, yourself as an example, let's say what makes you still able to ace it right, okay? So, it's also on, okay? Even though, let's say, okay, you say, oh, my baju, oh, not right already, okay? But when you come out, yeah, you still speak confidently regardless what you wear. Okay, mm. now, if let's say, for example, if let's say, for example, mm. if on the event itself, you manage to wear or dress it right, okay, mm. so the impact of what you get is even better. Yeah? Yeah. So when we talk about that, we will suggest the youth nowadays, yeah, is always good for them to observe, okay, observe what is right. And then one thing I have to address here, um, because we have different races and culture. Respecting different races and culture is very important. Okay, and in the context of Malaysia, uh, wearing it perhaps the right length, how low should it go, you know, how short is too short, you know, that all this matters. Even though yeah. when we talk about the international standard, right, showing less skin is more professional. So oh. all these things have to be observed. Yeah, yeah, even internationally, um the more skin you show okay the lesser you are professional yeah. so mm. this is even at top internationally and mm. second how i look at it is the sensitivity uh, cultural sensitivity is something that we need to observe okay now dressing right is not only uh, is not only for boosting confidence it's also part of etiquette uh, the etiquette mm. as in like we are polite Huh? We respect, yeah. So these are the things that we have to look into. Yeah. 
But I, I think I think you share very good very good tips and all, especially in the etiquette part. Appropriate is one thing I learned just now. And speaking of which, we have a uh, Raja Azura Raja Mahayudin, uh, Doctor Wendy, uh, who who say Doctor Wendy is someone who walks the talk, and when it comes to image and branding, it's her, her personality and sincerity that shine. Great one, sis Wendy, love for you. Uh, Hokiet says oh, Hokiet is here again. Okay, hi Hokiet. Doctor Wendy has great sense of humor. All right. Uh, okay, so we have oh we have one question comes in very timely. Uh, perhaps uh, okay. there will probably be the last question because we're almost reaching the end of this program. Uh, Siti Maria okay. asked Sami asked a very good question, very timely. I can see that online meeting, example Skype and Zoom, will continue, will be trending, even though after MCO. What is the do's and don'ts in image to impress people via online? What's your take on this? Good ah, question, Siti. Okay, yes, no matter how for female. A little bit of makeup is needed okay no matter how even though if it is work from home but makeup is needed for female okay and then secondly is actually on the, the things that we wear yeah of course let's say if it is a business meeting still we have to to wear as if we are meeting them in person now um on wednesday a few days ago i have a uh, online outline presentation meeting uh, with uh, the head of a, a group. So, yeah, it's for a GLC. And then I was like, hmm. So I purposely drove to office because I just do not want to have any disturbance for the presentation. Secondly, I wear full suit, including bottom, you know, because I seen, you know, during the MCO, a lot of people just wear something on top. I say, how if they ask me to stand up and yeah. say anything? Yeah, and, or maybe I say, oh, I forgot to take something. I have, I have to walk away. Then how? So I actually rather wear the whole suit so that first yeah, you will feel more confident because yes. now you know that you are prepared. Okay. So, and then secondly, also the colors, make it contrast, make it contrast. Now speaking about contrast, there are a few tips on contrast. The higher the contrast, the more people pay attention to what you say and even the words even though it is soft yeah higher contrast will create bigger impact on your speech so it actually linked together with our voice projection yeah so wear high contrast yeah i think that's uh, very important for ladies i i hope that uh, doctor has answered your question uh, on how to how to be how to look good on online but i'm, I'm very curious about this not everybody has a friend you know, nobody is not everybody is so fortunate like me to have a friend to ask, uh, like you actually consult on. Um, uh, how I have a question: How do we actually check and balance? You know what is right? Who or who do we? Or maybe doctor, you can share who is the. So you know, of course, you can evaluate yourself, but not everybody has that knowledge. You know, how do we check and balance? Uh, whether uh, are we doing it right or are we doing it wrong? Ah, uh, okay. Now always remember: less is more. Less is more means that, yeah, no, nothing. Now, if you want to break the rules, first, you must master the rule. Mm -hmm. If you are yet to master the rule, go safe, okay? Unless you are actually with friends or maybe you just want to experiment it out, it's up to you. But in fact, yeah, when it comes to something important or meeting people who are elderly with high ranking or destination, I always prefer to look a little bit more classic or conservative rather than a wow feeling whereby your earrings is overwhelming, you know, your cleavage is so, you know, and all these things. It's because, yeah, when we are out there, we have to remember one thing. You are the main attention or what you wear is the main attention. You get what I mean? So let's say if the rest of the things just complement you well, and you will do the magic. It's because the focus is on you. If let's say, for example, for this session, I'm wearing a very big, chunky, bright color earrings or whatever it is, yeah? People might just keep looking at this and that. And mm. you know what I mean? Especially when we are meeting people in corporate, you know? The, the lesser it is, the safer it is. So in, in the end of the day, even the color, okay? Um, plain color is always more formal than uh, the, the darker color or even with prints okay the louder the prints the lower the level of formality so you will never go wrong if you go solid okay it's okay for you to look conservative but what sells 
image is not only on how you look, but also yeah. your behavior and com communication. So if we manage to have the three aligned, that's how we can actually make it different. You know? Mm. Yeah. Right. It's, it's a very good perspective to it. And uh, unfortunately, we're going to ask you more, but we can't, right? So let's take in one last question. Uh, we have Mei Kwan okay. Chong uh, asking you, Dr. Mm -hmm. Wendy, communication is one of the key images. How do we speak confidently and clearly? Mm, okay. Now, speaking about speak, uh, so mm. it's actually from the face, uh, the voice. Okay. Yeah. Yesterday, I was actually having a chat via Zoom. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you notice, yeah, I am smiling within the half, the, the whole hour. Yes. Can mm. we actually smile and talk at the same time? Okay, this is something that we need to practice. Now, when we talk about mm. how to speak confidently, first, if you know what you are talking about, you will be confident. Yeah. Huh? If you don't even know what you are talking about, then how to be confident? Well, All of right. course, throughout the way, communication, if you can master it well, we can also master the goring skills. How you can still speak well <laughs> without that? substance. Yeah, so when you're goring so long, the hangers is good enough. Can? Yeah. Yes, so this is actually second. Now, when we talk about communication, okay, this one, let's practice. Yeah. We start with Mm. Then okay. never have a chunk. Yeah, first is called chunk up and chunk down. Yeah. Okay. Yep. When you chunk up, even though this is not your your master, uh, you're not your field. Uh, when you chunk up, means that you are you can actually say some statement that everybody has to be agreed with it. Yep. Yeah. Let's say for example, oh, the pandemic is actually hitting a lot of people. You cannot say no, no, no. It is a statement. It is a fact. Yeah. So after you chunk up a few times whereby you already get the buy-in from people, then only you start to chunk it down. Chunk yeah. down means that you start to drill down on your thoughts, your, your things like that. Yeah. So because human, yeah, the psychologically is that when they first like you, they agree with you, what you follow up yeah, and saying later, most of the time, you hardly screwed it up. Unless you totally go out of the topic, then that one I cannot say. Yeah, yeah, but most of the time, when you speak, check your pace. I'm not sure how many of you speak fast. I'm someone who speaks really fast. But, <laughs> okay, very good. As a trainer, I think speaking fast could be an advantage for us. This is another thing that we can actually practice. When we speak it up a bit, very boring stories can be very interesting. Okay? When we start to slow down, yeah. okay, and then make the voice a little bit dimmer, we will become downbeat, and that yeah. will be a little bit more serious, a little bit more boring. Okay, yes. so when you speak, have to be aware, smile, okay, and then play around with your voice, your pace, mm. speak fast, speak slow, and then after a while, this one falls into the the thirty eight percent of vocal. Okay, 38% means that what people hear. Just exactly like, let's say we go for a motivational speaker talk. When we are there, we are like, wow, yes, yes, very good, very good. But back home, you go and think about it. Like, actually, what the fellow say, so you know already. Motivational thing, but balik, balik, my, the same thing. Can? Mm -hmm. But why at the moment of time, we are like, wow, so good, so good. Yeah. So they are actually playing around, yeah, tricking with what we see, wow, the energy that they're using. And then the vocal, their voice is so confident. And then in the end, the 7% of verbal, what is being said is no longer important. Because whatever he or she said is already something that already is in us. And we find that whatever the person say, it is right. Yep. That's a very good summary to what we have. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mei Kwan, for asking. I hope that uh, Dr. Wendy addressed to your question. Uh, unfortunately, we are almost reaching the end of this Facebook Live interview. Of course, we would love to chat with you continue further. All right, so there are some announcements which I want to shout out to uh, before we officially say goodbye. And I would like to invite for those of you watching this Facebook Live right now, we would like to welcome all of you to like and share so that you will stand a chance in terms of winning a Touch & Go Ton Mahadeo Limited Edition card. So, and also remember, once you've also shared this, also remember to make it a public status so that we can we can know for that. And the next shout out which I want to do is in support of the uh, frontliners and the deserving family members. So right now, my apprentice, we're having this campaign called the Smite Meritis Care, 
would like to invite for those of you here to contribute towards the frontliners and the deserving family members. So the question is, how can we contribute? So I'm going to share with you the Telegram channel, and I would like to welcome and invite all of you here to join us in this Telegram channel, HTTPS, T.MY slash my brain days. We'd like to welcome all of you to join us as well. All right, so thank you very much. And May Kwan Chung says T, Q, me, M. Thank you very much to you, Dr. Wendy. And with that, uh, thank you so much for your time. So any last words that you have for our audience watching this, Dr. Wendy? Um, if you want to sustain on the right brand management, first, you have to be you so that it is authentic in and out. You know, people yes. want to be friend and follow you is because of who you are and not how we successfully mimic others. Right. We cannot survive and excel when it is not us. Right. Mm. So this comes in very timely because we have a lot of time to reflect who we are during this MCO, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> All right. Lawrence, anything that you want to address to our people right here? Uh, no, I, I think thank you so much, uh, Dr. Wendy. I think you're one of the few people that I wrote so many notes of what you have mm. said. Wow, and, thank uh, you. You never, you never, I mean, every meet that I have with her, to be very honest, I wrote every, every time I see her, I'll have to write down notes. There are so many things to wow, take in from her you. and learn from her. But I think both of you can be good friends because both of you always have this ABCD. Uh, <laughs> I think Wesley has this ABCD of success, and uh, your doctor has this ABCD of uh, uh, brand, uh, brand management. I think it's very, very timely that uh, because I've met with a lot of young people every day, you know, through interviews, through events, and mm -hmm. and I think this is one part that they really need to. But I, I really, if there's a topic that we should expand, I think this is the topic that young people should should have more in the future. But again, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Wendy, for spending this one hour with us. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you, you very much for a precious time. Thank and again, Hokkiet says thank you so much. Learned a lot from this session. One more time, I want to take this thank opportunity you. to say thank you very much for your time. And uh, for thank those of you watching, thank you so thank much for joining. And before we end, we normally have a tradition. Let's take a group picture. All right. So what we're going to do is uh, we show your love to the camera and then I'm going to take a screenshot. All right, ready? One, two, three. All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining. Until then, hope to see all of you again. And with that, thank you. Signing off from my apprentice. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.